Chapter 1, The Psychic Mechanism of Hysterical Phenomena. Actuated by a number of accidental observations, we have investigated over a period of years the different forms and symptoms of hysteria for the purpose of discovering the cause and the process which first provoked the phenomena in question, and which in a great many of our cases frequently appeared years before. In the great majority of cases, we did not succeed in elucidating the starting point from the mere history, no matter how detailed it might have been, partly because we had to deal with the experiences about which the discussion was disagreeable to the patients, but mainly because they really could not recall anything at all. Often they had no inkling of the causal connection between the causative process and the pathological phenomenon. It was generally necessary to hypnotize the patients and reawaken the memory of the time in which the symptom first appeared. But we thus succeeded in exposing that connection in the most precise and convincing manner. This method of examination in a great number of cases has furnished us with results which seem to be of theoretical as well as of practical value. It is of theoretical value because it has shown us that in the determination of the pathology of hysteria, the accidental factor plays a much greater part than is generally known and recognized. It is quite evident that in traumatic hysteria, it is the accident which evokes the, the syndrome. Moreover, in hysterical crises, if the patients state that in each attack they hallucinate the same process which evoked the first attack, here, too, the causal connection seems quite clear. But the situation is more obscure in the other phenomena. Our experiences have shown us that in the most varied symptoms which pass as spontaneous or, as it were, as idiopathic attainments of hysteria, stand in just as stringent connection with the causal trauma as the transparent phenomena mentioned. To such causal factors we are able to refer neuralgias as well as the different kind of anesthesias, often of years duration, contractures and paralyses, hysterical attacks and form convulsions, which every observer has taken for real epilepsy, petit mal and tick-like affections, persistent vomiting and anorexia, even up to the refusal of nourishment, all kinds of visual disturbances, constantly recurring visual hallucinations and similar affectations. The disproportion between the hysterical symptom of year's duration and the former cause is the same as the one we are regularly accustomed to seeing in the traumatic neuroses. Very often they are experiences of childhood which have established more or less intensive morbid phenomena for all succeeding years. The connection is often so clear that it is perfectly manifest how the causal event produced just this and no other phenomenon. It is quite clearly determined by the cause. Thus, let us take the most banal example. If a painful affect originates while eating and is repressed, it may produce nausea and vomiting and then continue for months as a hysterical symptom. The following examples will illustrate what we mean. A very distressed young girl, while anxiously watching at a sickbed, fell into a dreamy state, had terrifying hallucinations, and her right arm, which was at the time hanging over the back of the chair, became numb. This resulted in a paralysis contracture and anesthesia of that arm. She wanted to pray but could find no words but finally succeeded in uttering an English children's prayer. Later, on developing a very grave and most complicated hysteria, she spoke, wrote, and understood only English, whereas her native tongue was incomprehensible to her for a year and a half. Another example. A very sick child finally fell asleep. The mother exerted all of her willpower to make no noise to awaken it. But because she resolved to do so, she emitted a clicking sound with her tongue. Hysterical counterwill. Uh, this was later repeated on another occasion when she wished to be absolutely quiet and developed a tick, which in the form of a tongue clicking accompanied every excitement for years. 
one more, a very intelligent man was present while his brother was anesthetized, anesthetized and enclosed, hip stretched, right? He had his hip stretched. At the moment when the joint yielded and cracked, he perceived severe pain in his own hip, which continued for almost a year. In other cases, the connection is not so simple, there being only, as it were, a symbolic relation between the cause and the pathological phenomenon, just as in the normal dream. Thus, psychic pain may result in neuralgia, the affect of moral disgust, may cause vomiting. We have studied patients who want to make the most prolific use of such symbolization. In still other cases, such a determination is at first sight incomprehensible, yet in this group we find the typical hysterical symptoms, uh, contraction of the visual field, epiliform convulsions and similar symptoms. The explanation of our views concerning this group must be deferred for a more detailed discussion of the subject. Such observations seem to demonstrate the pathogenic analogy between simple hysteria and traumatic neurosis and justify a broader conception of traumatic hysteria. Uh, the active etiological factor in traumatic neurosis is really not the insignificant bodily injury, but the affect of fright that is the psychic trauma. In an analogous manner, uh, our investigations show that the causes of many, if not all, cases of hysteria can be designated as psychic traumas.